which pretty much takes the uh, the high points and low points of your of your image and basically maps it to the reflection, a bit like uh, bring something in black and white. So let's go over into our material. Let's actually try and render that, and it doesn't look too bad. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Maybe bring up the uh, the color mapping. Bring it back up to one. God, I hate scrolling this slow. Yeah, that looks good. And also another thing they can do is add an environment map. So to do that, just go into your world and then click the textures button, which will show you that right here you have the sequence, the scene, and the world, and then the texture, which will be applied to the world. So uh, let's select our orange mirror here and create an independent copy. We'll call it uh, world mirror and that should be fine. Uh, there's something that Jonathan Williamson did in his tutorial about this and it's, he changed the coordinates to ang map. Now I don't know what exactly this is supposed to do, but I'll just do it too, I think. Was it Jonathan Williamson or another video that I saw? I'm not sure. So let's try the... Why is it not working? Hmm. Okay, let's just try and put that back to view and see if that works. No. Why is it not working? Hmm. Um, let's try add. Maybe add will work. No. I oh, forget. It. Let's just leave it at mix and let's just try that render. Save and render. And I'm liking this specularity. That already looks much better to me, except for this part. So maybe I'll turn down the saturation, the not the saturation, the specularity. Setting up materials can take quite a while. Uh, maybe 0.2 actually, or 0.15. Let's try more reflection and render that. Yeah, that doesn't look too bad. And let's try the same thing on that blue. Add in that reflection map. So that's orange mirror. Let's create independent copy once again. Just so we can change the settings individually if we want. And that's all fine. Change this over to screen once again. And map it over to the reflection. And render. Okay, that I'm not liking. It's much purple. So maybe let's change this over here. And maybe... Yeah, okay, let's try that. Hmm. Yeah, that doesn't look too bad. Pretty cool logo, if I say so myself. So yeah, let's save that. And... I'd say this is pretty much done. Where's my document? There it is. Final render. Last step. We're done. Wow. Didn't think that would happen that fast. Actually, let's try and change these settings a bit more. Uh, let's try global. Or maybe sphere. Yeah, sphere, maybe. Let's try that. Doesn't seem to change much. Okay, let's cancel that. And put that back to view, and I'll show you a little trick here. A trick that I learned recently. Re-render re your scene without the uh, coordinates changed on the world texture. Just leave it at view. And that's one render. And we are currently on slot 1. Now if you change this over to slot 2, change this over to sphere, and then re-render, you now have two different renders from two different settings. So you can basically compare the two. So let's wait until it's done. Uh, this finishes, and let's compare the two, slot 1 and slot 2, and it absolutely did not make any difference whatsoever. So let's just leave it at view and just forget that, and I'd say this is pretty much done. You could, of course, change the camera angle, uh, like change this, put it over here, uh, actually uh, select your camera and track it to the empty. 
and select your two main main things. Move it over here, and maybe move it down. No, Z. Come on, not the local Z, just the Z. What in the world is it doing? Come on, there. Bring this down. Shift one, and maybe a bit more towards the front, like this. Maybe move it up by five. Move it around. She said minus one. Yeah, that looks good. And maybe add in a reflective plane like I usually use. So let's add in mesh plane and just move it just below this logo and then just scale it up to a ridiculous size like uh, 20 times bigger and add a new material to it we'll call this ground plane and just leave the intensity bring it up to one doesn't really matter bring this all the way down to black uh, bring down the specularity just so it doesn't blind you bring up the hardness and just turn on mirror, bring up depth, and just 0.1. So that should be fine. You can also add a texture to this if you want, but I'll just leave it as a reflective plane. Oh, and, and that's nice. We're getting the reflection of the rest just on the inside here. I'm liking that. And we are not getting reflection off the plane. That's strange. Okay, let's try something a little different. Let's take this and rotate it along the x-axis 90 degrees, bring it up to uh, above our plane here, and maybe just uh, rotate it along the z a bit, and move our cameras again. Just create something that looks nice. And say we're here, and actually this will need to move a bit further back, I think. Let's just move it to camera. Yeah, that looks fine. And actually let's move up this empty, bring it roughly over here, and bring down our lamps, because now we have to rearrange our lighting setup. Just bring it over here, like behind, and bring it back here and let's try that render oh that is looking cool that looks like the earth but the reflective plane is not working why is it not working um oh i turned off ray tracing turned off ray tracing uh, where is it, where is it, where is it, where is it, uh, ray tracing, there, that's why, I am stupid sometimes, so let's just wait for this to render, might take a while, but I'm definitely liking this texture here, it really looks like a planet, so that's a really concept, oh, I just got an idea, Oops, sorry, I just hit the microphone by accident. So yeah, this is looking pretty good. We're getting the reflection here. And I'm really liking this. Could he do a bit of post-processing in GIMP afterwards? And maybe add in a flare or a supernova or something? Like, in the corner just to get it like a flare, a lens flare? Could look pretty good. And I also like that this reflection is not actually reflecting these textures. It's like two different logos at the same time. So let's save this. We'll actually save this render and call it final. So press F3 while still in your image editor. Go to the renders folder if you have one. We'll call this final render awesome. There. And it's saved as PNG, which is my favorite image format. You can save it at BMP or JPEG if you want, but just be sure to turn up the quality and just save. And come on. Sometimes freezes. There. Let's just save this. 
And I'd say we're pretty much done. Yeah, so let's go into our uh, tutorial folder and go into our renders. And if I go back into my tutorials and shoot, the render is not there. Um, yeah, well, it doesn't really matter because this one is really just much better than the original. I'm really liking this. So you can see that we have the textures reflecting the Cintel, uh reflection map, which works out pretty nicely. It gives it a bit of variety. This one too. And you have the kind of more metallic render on the bottom, which is just really cool. So that's pretty much it. Blender heads, we're done. So this was creating a Blender logo using Bezier curves, or in this case, a Bezier circle, or Bezier. I'm never sure how to pronounce it. I have to look it up again. Uh, but uh, hopefully this was helpful, and uh, see you soon.